What is up? What is poppin'? And see. Anyways, before we hop into this fucking video, excuse my French. Uh. Before we hop into this video, I want to show you a short reel of images and videos that I took at Pitchfork that Without me? Oh my god. That is the only documentation that is decent quality, Instagram, Snapchat quality we're showing so that y'all get a little gist of how I was spending my time there. Clearly not on social media that much. But yeah. Let's get into the video. Hey, OL, bring that beat back. Bring that beat back. So, I'm basically, by the description you would know by now, I'm talking about uh, my experience at Pitchfork. Sorry if I'm looking down, I have my notes. I have a lot to talk about. I'm trying to make it as short as possible because it's barely in my mind anymore because it's happened like it's been almost a month since I attended Pitchfork in Chicago um so I wanted to talk about my experience there well it's kind of still fresh in my mind um so I've been attending Pitchfork for three years the first year I went was in 2017 and I went to go see Solange and that's it. I only went for that one day and that day was perfect and worth it. Um, and then the, th the second year I went there to with my ex. Uh, we went all three days. We stayed in an Airbnb um, with a really nice family. Uh, and that was probably like out of like these three years together probably like the best lineup they had that year like I have to say when like you have more than like five to ten people that I want to see that's a really successful lineup to me like if I just want to see like five people out of all those three days uh, it's not it that's not it chief that third year we saw 
like Superboy, Saba, Drum, like we saw so many like of the acts and celebrities just walking around like having fun at the festival that themselves and it was like a really great fucking experience that year and I think also that was probably like the it was the first year that I really experienced Pitchfork and didn't just go that one day I went all three days. So I guess I can't really compare it to the one day that I went in 2017 to see Solange, but still, <laughs> it was great. Um, but yeah, now I'm here to tell you about my experience at Pitchfork for 2019. I went by myself because that was a form of self-care for myself. I enjoy traveling by myself. Um, I encourage everybody to do it, but I know it's not for everyone. So, Pitchwork is in Chicago, Chicago, Illinois. I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, so I drove from Milwaukee to Illinois. Um, it took about like an hour and 30 minutes. So, I really didn't have, for that weekend, I really didn't have to pay for anything besides like food and gas. Um, and, and of course, drinks. Um, I'm super grateful for my friends that let me stay in their apartment. Um, bless, bless they souls, bless. Because trying to find an Airbnb, especially during a music festival, can be hard. But yeah, stayed with them. Yeah, attended the music festival. I don't know why I need to feel like I need to say anything else. But, um... I'm gonna go over the app really quick for you guys. So here is what the Pitchfork app is. So this is the Pitchfork app. So it's kind of just showing you all the artists that are here. And you can just scroll down and view their images. You click on their bio and it tells you about a little bit about their career, what stage they're gonna be at and what time they're performing and what day. So he's performing at the red stage. And so when you click on that, it'll show you exactly where that red stage is. So I favorited Vili because he's someone I wanted to see. So that gets added onto my schedule. On the sidebar, you can click schedule and then it gives you basically a different way to look at the schedule. Um, and it shows you all the artists again and then like who you favorited it. So all the people that I favorited goes to my favorites, of course. Duh. It basically just creates a, another schedule that's customized to you and tells you what times they all perform. So for me, this is very useful because then I can either be there when gates open or just go when the first person that I favorited is performing and let's just be there until I need to be there. Also notifications that lets you know like the weather and like they give you like enjoy the sapphire lounge and things like that. Letting you know just like if there's lightning, if there's going to be water being given out for free. The weather was pretty shitty. So then we can go to the map. It kind of just lays out where everything is. And it shows you where the food is. You can press on there and get more information about like each tent, where the stages are, where VIP Plus is, where the craft fair is, and who's at the craft fair, who you specifically want to see in their location. Then we have the merch page, which isn't that important, but it's nice to know that you can get it afterwards too. Then they have the after party uh, tab. So you can know where all the after parties are happening and where I specifically wanted to go to the AMFM one because the person that runs AMFM is actually from my state. So that was really cool, but I didn't get a chance to go because I was going to so many other parties. Then they have general information about the music festival, just things you would need to know in case of an emergency and what they do in those instances, such as like heat um, and the people that they have around for cases where people just get too hot. Um, and they show you where things are located, when gates open, 
when the box office is open um, and all about like the VIP plus and what that includes for them and just other useful information, general information that people need to know that I don't think a lot of people really look at. They probably skim through it until they feel like they need to go back to it and actually need it. So, yeah. So now that I've gone over the app and hopefully you guys got like a good gist of what the app does and how that was helpful for me, um, I know that the scheduling thing was really helpful because I really wasn't trying to be there at the time the gates were going to open because the gates open at 12. Um, and I think usually the festival ended around like a 10, 11 ish. Um, so it was helpful by that. So I know what act started at what time and what time I needed to leave. Um, so I wasn't late, but unfortunately I was late almost every day. So I missed a lot of the people I wanted to see. Um, so for day one, of course, I wanted to see the great black ensemble, Vali, Mike, standing on the corner, Rico Nasty, Earl Sweatshirt, Pusher T, and Haim. Haim, however you guys pronounce that. Um, Earl Sweatshirt was actually supposed to perform in 2018. 2018. Um, he canceled his set or something because of like an anxiety, but I don't know how true that rumor is, but his set was canceled. But I'm glad I got to see him this year because he cute and he great and cha. Anyways, it was all these sets were perfect. I I woke up. I missed like Mike, the great music ensemble, and standing on the corner, and I left around like. <sighs> the time like 30 minutes to Rico Nasty set I'm like I'm gonna make it I have to make it Rico Nasty is like my sister in another world because we're both I, I, would, I call her my sister because we're both Puerto Rican and black and both edgy as hell and I'm just like yeah it's my sister guys yeah. All right. but anyways <laughs> I missed her set too and I was so pissed. I was so fucking pissed. So pissed. Like, but that's my fault because I took forever to uh, install my lace front and like the glue wasn't working. And your hair is uneven. You look dusty. And I had to do my makeup, but I looked great. So great that Vogue took pictures of me right when I walked in and that was a blessing in disguise. Um, I think it made up for me missing Rico Nasty, um, and I'll put pictures somewhere on this video, um, and you guys can see it, I'll include the link at, in the description, but yeah, Vogue took pictures of me, um, and basically they were just going around taking pictures of people that had really good looks and styles, um, and then interviewing them on like why they were there at the music festival, where they were from, and like who they were seeing at Pitchfork and what they were wearing. Um, so that was a great experience. Photographer was super cool. Uh, the girl that interviewed me was super cool. Like they all were just cool and had great style. Like, and they worked for Vogue. Like cool. Y'all know I was late day one and missed damn near every person I wanted to see. But I've seen Earl Sweatshirt, Pusha T, Heim, and Valet. Great sets. Um, I included some of the videos in the beginning. Hopefully my video doesn't get flagged or something because of the music. Uh, I've seen them, roamed around, ate some food. Uh, I think one thing about pitchfork is that and mind you I'm a, I've only been here the past three years so I can't really compare it to the other years but a lot of the shit they had there was the same uh there was nothing new and I'm talking about nothing new as in like the lineup of like artists that they have there so like in the I'm gonna say gate one, you walk in and it's all like screen printers and like they screen print like concert posters and like it's just a ton of screen printed posters. 
and it's mostly like all the same artists and like just all the same people same partners that they partner with um goose island um i think it's like goose island don julio the same like food vendors uh same craft uh small businesses um all the same and i think that's one downfall of course we go there for the music but also like it's cool to have new have a new to every year and have it be something different anyways um yeah i think that was one one con is just like nothing was new um all the same things it was nice like to see the same people I buy from and see them have like new things but also like I like having new experiences and like seeing the same old shit like that almost makes me not want to go there every year but and not want to spend that much money every year and like try to go to a new music festival but like I'm definitely gonna go there next year um because I'm just going for the music really like and not anything else but the music and I think for the price that they have it at it's definitely worth seeing like all those people um and whatever their lineup is um but I think what was really nice because the weather was so fucking shitty and hot I was fucking melting honey melting drenched sticky gross glossy oily all of that um fucking like 90 degree weather weekend and it was like hella like just mood swing type weather raining um i think pitchfork was really great for offering which they I, they would have to because i think it would be shitty not to offer free like tap water for people to refill their water bottles they had buses lined up for people that needed ac and needed to ch like just chill um, and they were also just giving out free water bottles too, um, which they weren't cold, but it's free water, so can't complain. Day two, uh, the acts that I wanted to see, Rick Wilson, Amber Mark, Freddie Gibbs, Jeremiah and the Isley Brothers, missed like half of those people. Um, I missed Rick Wilson, Amber Mark, and Freddie Gibbs. Um, and I think this was, I don't know, I think this was the day that Dreezy was supposed to perform, but don't, wanna, I don't think it was, I think it was Sunday, but I missed, uh, again, I missed Rick Wilson, Amber Mark, Freddie Gibbs, but I seen Jeremiah and the Isley Brothers, um, it was super hot this day, it was raining, uh, I got there, I did get there late, of course, because I missed the half of the people I wanted to see. Uh, I heard that they evacuated uh, mid-festival because of the rain and the lightning was crazy. So they had to evacuate for like damn near two hours, I think. Don't quote me on that. The weather was really affecting like the success of the festival but they still pulled it off like it was still a good experience overall and i think this day i roamed around a little bit more um and started looking at more of the art and like buying small things again like all the stuff was wasn't new like i could probably come back there in two years and see the same people and buy the same shit so um that was cool Brought like a tote bag, bought some shit from Coco Rococo, thrift store in Chicago. They always sell like sunglasses and that's where I get like a lot of my awesome ass sunglasses. So I always get like three or four pair from them a year if I go to Pitchfork. And yeah, Jeremiah was cool. He played all the cool old bangers. And then I seen the Isley Brothers hung out with my friends didn't mention this but my friends are working there um which was really nice and I got to catch up with them they were making their dollars um 
Also, to mention their partners, Pitchfork's partners, they partnered with a lot of people. I'm going to name a few that I interacted with personally. Um, and that was AccuView, like the contacts, AccuView. AccuView had an installation, an interactive installation. And it was kind of like these lights, these light, like, bars, fixtures that were hanging to create, like, this cool aesthetic like Missy Elliott music video vibes. It was dope. So it was basically like pretend you're in a music video, which is weird because there was no, there was music in the background because it's a music festival, but also like they didn't have any music. So like they were like watching me and I'm over here like to silence. It was weird, but like I got this really cute like little video that looked like I was in a music video, but like it was dope. Um, don't wear, have to wear contacts, but it was good that they offered, I think they needed more installation shit like that. Something interactive that people can touch and like move around in and look at. Um, and then they had like the check your blind spots bus, which I've already experienced at a music festival in my own um, city so like I didn't really feel like I needed to do that also like I do a lot of organizing that kind of has to do with those same objectives so I'm like oh I don't need this I don't need to, well not that I don't need this but not that I need to experience this again um, but I think that was important that they have that there because ton of white people there seeing black rappers and don't actively act as an ally to black folks and if you know you know what I'm talking about but I think that was a very important um interaction and for people to realize their like blame racism and etc etc um and then there was the Goose Island which I think is like a local brewery in Chicago also don't quote me on that because I don't know but like I think it is and they're there every year which I feel like that makes sense for them to be a partner every year because they're local and they brew beer their beer is fucking good um <laughs> personally I like beer uh and then they had Kind like Kind the granola bars I think I was really frustrated because they were like, I think they were the only food related partner that was handing out like, like food, um, that people could eat and like they had the driest, they picked the driest granola bars that they had to give us on the hottest weekend and mind you I was eating them of course. But, like, they were just dry as hell, like, and not the good ones, like, they're not the popular ones that people was bu would buy. It was just gross. Like, I took a ton of them, of course, but they were gross. Um, <laughs> and so they were handing out a lot of granola bars, but, you know, like, I'm grateful. I can be grateful, but I'm also going to be critical. Uh, there was Sev Sevka... Vodka, I don't know how to say that. They, I did not really interact with them much, but they were always in my peripheral. And they had a really cool setup and installation as well that was kind of similar to AccuView with the lights, which I don't think is like strategic. Again, uh, again with this whole like a new and things being similar and the same um they had a cool installation pink they were giving out free shit and cute little transparent bags with shit in it coupon probably i don't know um but it was aesthetically pleasing and they had like a little like couches and stuff that was cool um but yeah that was day two roamed around had me more empanadas i'm gonna probably put the name of the empanada place I was eating at there was pictures in the video in the beginning best empanadas ever like literally crack is in those empanadas they're expensive but they're good my favorite are the chicken pollo and 
um, their goat cheese and jalapeno with mango sauce. All I was eating was just empanadas every day. <laughs> it was just so good. They like knew my face. They knew exactly what I wanted when I walked up every day. I would do it twice in a row in one day. <laughs> um, but yeah, the last day, day three, the and I think this was the day Dreezy was performing because I wanted to see Dreezy. Charlie, XEX, not so much, but I did, but not really. JPEG Mafia, Robin, and I Bayi. And it was really refreshing to see them and wanting to be interactive with the crowd and wanting to dance on stage. I really appreciated them a lot. Um, and day I, that day was pretty like, that was a self, it was a Sunday. So Sunday are my self care days. So I treated it as so. So I was chilling a lot. Like I was like, I found a place to sit and just sat there for hours and just like ate food um because again I really wasn't trying to see anybody that day um I could have just left but I just wanted to chill there I paid for that day so I'm gonna stay there the whole day because then I felt like I would have gotten FOMO um and so I chilled got food talked to friends bought some more shit that I didn't need like more sunglasses and stuff and I always buy a poster a screen print poster every year that I go so I had I brought a poster from I don't know what their like printing company is called but it's like a little Yachty poster from like a concert he did somewhere and it's like Bart Simpson with like the little Yachty braids and the grill and shit um it's super dope I love the colors it's clean um, that was the poster that stood out to me the most. The rest of them were just like, again, like shit I already seen the year before and I didn't want it. And like, really I only buy like posters that are concert posters that are screen printed of like rappers or singers or something like that. And if I like the aesthetic, of course, so brought that. That was nice. Um, okay, it was lacking this year. Again, like the whole new, the partners, same partners. I found out that they, that Pitchwork was bought out by Conde Nas. Um, I wasn't aware of who Conde Nas was. They like this huge technolo technology like production company that also owns Vogue as well um I probably sound like I don't know what I'm talking about because I don't know what I'm talking about but I know what Conde Nas is but I don't I can't effectively tell you a description of them but they do own Pitchfork and that was a new fact that I found out so like that also in the back of my head if it's not happening already that if that I hope that Pitchfork doesn't come super like weird and corporate and like not fun to go to anymore and not interesting enough to go to anymore because they're owned and they got monopolized and so forth. So just after experiencing those three days, um, I'm, a, I'm gonna go again. Uh, I signed up to be like someone who gives feedback to um, the Pitchfork experiences because they send like an email like, hey, take the survey, blah, blah, blah. So now I'm like a Pitchfork, like, I don't know what the name is, but so I basically give them feedback whenever they email me for feedback. I take these surveys, fill out information, and they get it and then probably consider it and then like, whatever changes they would make for the next year or the following year or the following following year that would happen this video was more so to talk to briefly just go over like things that i was thinking about and like the logistics of things and not more so of like the artists that were performing there and like oh they were cool but their sets suck 
Like, it was just more of just, like, Pitchfork as a whole and me kind of critiquing them. Um, just because I have, like, my own business mindset and things that I'm trying to pursue and I was kind of looking at them as an example, so I kind of was being a little more aware of, like, how things were being ran there and how it compared to last year or the year before. Um, are they, what type of people they're bringing in? Um, is it a range of people? Like, uh, is the set, like, successful? Is, like, the set of people that they have, like, cohesive? Like, does it make sense? Um, and so I was just thinking about all those things and hopefully I kind of gave y'all like a gist of like how this year ran and like maybe you would be interested in going and experiencing Pitchfork yourselves. Um, I would recommend going. Um, I know they have, they're going to have Pitchfork in Paris too. Um, I wasn't aware that they have it in other, in other like countries and states so really I just didn't really do much of that type of research I just knew it happened in Chicago so I wanted to go to Chicago because it was a neighbor neighboring state so I'm like I can go to that I have a car um so yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this video um please subscribe I would really appreciate that I hope to have more content for you guys I haven't really figured out what I'm going to do next, but I hope that you guys can stick around and please um, leave comments on what you guys thought about this, what I could have talked about more. I would definitely maybe make a part two and talk about a little bit more. Um, I don't really have anything else. Again, like the things are leaving my mind of things that I probably wanted to talk about that I didn't touch on in this video that I wanted to, but yes, please subscribe, um, keep an eye out for my videos, please, I'm new here.